I'm Lauren from TastePC.TV, and so I'm taking a look at Asus's new flagship workstation motherboard, the X99EWS, which can support DDR4 memory in the new Haswell E processors. In this video, I'm just going to be taking a tour around the board, but I am planning on doing another video, which hopefully should be uploaded today, a um, benchmark video, where I compare X99 DDR4 memory from the 5960X and the 5820K to X79 and Z97. And I'll link that somewhere in case you're interested, but let's get started. So before we take a look at the board itself, I just want to really quickly cover all the accessories that came with it. Firstly, we've got a rear IO shield, which is spongy, which I really love. We've also got three SLI bridges, a four-way one, a three-way one, and a two-way one. Although it annoys me that these ones are always bright orange. I don't know why they couldn't just be black like the ROG ones. We've then got 12 SATA cables, two really old school USB and serial brackets, because obviously one of the important things with workstation boards is that they have legacy support. And then also just some connectors to make it easier to plug in like your front IO cables. And then also a manual, a CD and this sticker. And then we've got the X99E workstation board itself, which as you can see has got none of the blue of the X79E workstation board. And we've still got this black, really stealthy, really sleek looking board. I also really like that we've got the same kind of effect on the um, chipset's heatsink than we had with the Z97 Deluxe's chipset heatsink, because I always thought the Z97 Deluxe was like, had like a really classy look to it. But with this board, we do have subtle silver or kind of chromey accents running down the side of the heatsinks. And if you can get it so the light hits it in just the right kind of angle, which is what I've kind of tried to do here, they really do glow and it just makes the board look so elegant and so beautiful. <laughs> it's really nice. So with this board, it supports Haswell E processors, but the socket actually has more pins than a standard 2011 fee free socket. And that's because Haswell E processors have more contacts. And Asus was able to reverse engineer the CPU, find out what the additional contacts did, and then adapt their socket, adding more pins to make use of some of these additional contacts. Although I have to say, I don't know why other motherboard manufacturers wouldn't also kind of look into what the additional contacts did and do something similar. But unfortunately, I haven't really had a chance to look at any other multiple manufacturers X99 boards yet and see what it is, you know, the other manufacturers have done. But with the OC socket, as they're calling it, it's supposed to give you control of more voltages, allow you to raise the V-core on strap higher than standard 2011 sockets, so that if you're extreme overclocking, you can hit a higher clock, and also allow you to push your memory's frequency higher. So then with the power delivery, the board's got an eight phase design, which as I've said in previous videos, it's not about the amount of phases, but the quality of the actual parts used, which determines you know, how good the power delivery is, what kind of overclock you can get, etc. And with this, another board uses 12K Japanese capacitors, beat thermal chokes, which have a gold coating for minimal loss and just look really sexy, all lined up like that. And then we've also got Dr. Moss MOSFETs. The memory's also got a two plus two um, power phase design. So then for the memory, we've got eight slots, which can support up to 64 gig of quad channel DDR4 memory, which as I said in the introduction, I am gonna be talking more about in a separate video. Um, but obviously with this board, it's not compatible with DDR4 memory. So if you do buy X99, not only have you got to buy a new motherboard, but also obviously a CPU and memory too. We've then got seven X16 PCI Express slots, although these three are actually only wired at 8X, but it does mean if you are gonna be using four graphics cards, they will run at 16X, 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 which is pretty epic. And it does this with two PLX chips, which you can see the heat pads for just under the heatsink there. But before I take you for a closer tour around the board, I should probably quickly mention that it is slightly wider than the standard ATX boards, although you should be able to kind of look at a picture of a case to be able to judge whether it will fit or not. So taking a closer look around the board, firstly we've got two 8-pin CPU power connectors, but these are set kind of more in the middle of the top of the board rather than to the left, which means that if you've got one of those cases where you've only got a cable management hole in the very top left-hand corner for kind of, you know, across the top of the board, it means that you might have to run cables over the top of the board to the connectors, which probably isn't going to look particularly great. But down here, we've also got a six pin power connector just to give you extra um, power to your PCI lanes, which is great if you're gonna be running three or four graphics cards or you know, like a capture card, a RAID card, um, a PCI Express solid state drive, etc. You might have noticed that the two CPU fan headers are here rather than along the cross the top of the board. And I would much prefer it if they were at the top of the board just because then I find it's kind of easier to just tuck the fan cable out of the way. We've also got another four pin PWM fan header here and then another one over here. 
We've then also got the CMOS battery, the memo K button, the 24 pin power connector, and two USB 3 ports, which are powered by the SBDIA 1074 chip, which is just hiding under the heatsink here. We've then got the fifth fan header, an easy XMP switch, which when you switch it, it will just load up the memory's XMP profile and set it running to its correct megahertz. And then onto that, we've got something new from Asus, which is a Dr. Power switch. And if you kind of install the Dr. Power utility software and then enable this switch, Windows will notify you if it detects a problem with your power supply, which is kind of cool. Um, and underneath that, we've got the SATA connectors. And here we've got eight SATA free six gigabit per second connectors and two SATA express connectors. Although if you want to, you can kind of disregard these two little bits here and use the board as if it's got 12 SATA free 6 gigabit per second connectors if you want. But this bottom SATA Express connector here is powered by the Asmedia 106 SE chip. Um, all the rest are Intel, but these two black ones here don't support Intel Rapid Storage Technology or RAID. Then under here we've got an M.2 socket free slot which can support either 2260 or 2280 sized SSDs. And then below that we've got a case fan control setting jumper which you can set to either BIOS or PWM which by default is set to BIOS, which is good because obviously you can still control everything in BIOS or using the Fan Expert software. We've then also got a CPU over voltage jumper for if you're going to be extreme overclocking. We've got encase intrusion header, a DRCT or direct key header, which you can plug a button into and then if you press that, it'll take you direct to BIOS and the front IO headers. We then have the sixth and final four pin PWM fan header. And of course, all the fan headers on this board can support either three or four pin fans. We've got the power and reset button, a Thunderbolt header, two USB 2.0 ports, trusted platform module header, the temperature sensor header for the temperature probes, and both an EPU and TPU switch. The EPU switch focuses on energy efficiency and moderates your power consumption, and the TPU switch focuses on system performance. And if you set it to kind of one, um, it will give you an overclock to adjust the multiplier. If you set it to two, it'll give you overclock both multiplier and base clock. But you can kind of um, modify or tweak both of these in the 5 way optimization software in AI Suite 3. We've then also got the clear CMOS button, Q code readout, serial port connector, front panel audio connector, and digital audio connector. And then we've got the separated off Crystal Sound 2 audio section, which is the same as what we've seen on the Z97 Asus boards, and still features a Realtek ALC 1150 codec. And then finally we've got the rear I.O., which consists of 10 USB ports, four of which are Intel, the rest are as media. This one is for the USB BIOS flashback feature, which button is here, where you can flash the BIOS arm of USB stick. And then this one is for the Q code logger and the buttons here. And that's just where if you leave a USB stick in and kind of hold the button down for a few seconds to enable it, it will keep a log of your Q codes, which I suppose could help with diagnosing your PC if it's having issues. We've then got two eSATA ports and two Intel Gigabit LAN ports, which are completely Intel, you know, from the controller to the interlinks between them, which is great. But I'm kind of disappointed that we're not seeing 10 gigabit on an X99 board, but I suppose you do have plenty of PCIe lanes for, you know, networking card, and it means that if you're one of these people that doesn't really require fast networking, it kind of keeps the price of the board down. We've then also got an optical out and the audio ports. So that was my overview of the Asus X99 EWS motherboard. I think if you are going to be looking for a workstation board, the kind of two things you should be looking for is connectivity and reliability. And with this board, I feel like it's definitely got the connectivity box ticked. Um, in regards to reliability, as this isn't a full review, I haven't actually really had a chance to get the board on a test bench and have a play with it. But it does have features like the Dr. Power utility software um, and obviously the Q code logger. But I have to say, I think this is a really beautiful board, especially for a workstation board. So if you like this video, hit the like button, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and you want to see more of my videos, and thanks for watching!